Hi guys, this is another one of those grandad projects that's probably doomed to failure, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. This is the last one out of a four pack of cheap foam gliders that I bought in Wilco. Uh, what I call party favours, the sort of thing that when you have a birthday party and you're giving people something to take away with them, you'd put one of these in the bag along with some sweets or that sort of thing. They're not good flyers, they're just chuck gliders, although there's a propeller there that's just a nose weight in effect. But when I showed some of these in some of my videos people were asking about making them electric powered or even radio controlled. Well we're not going to be radio controlled but I might try using the electric motor out of one of these toothbrushes. Now, don't for one minute think it's worth buying one of these toothbrushes to get the motor out of it. These are quite expensive. Um, they range from about £4 down to, well, maybe £2, certainly £3. two ninety nine. I think I've been buying them for. And I buy them because I use them as a toothbrush. As you can see, this one's well worn. They vibrate. And that's because they've got a little electric motor in there with an offset weight on it that makes it vibrate. But rather than throw them away when I've finished using them, I usually take the motors out and see what I can do with them. So that's the electric motor. You can see it's got that sort of half moon shaped vibrating or weight that helps it vibrate. Now one thing I have noticed in recent years, these motors have been getting smaller. Probably so they can sell the toothbrushes cheaper. But earlier ones were about another eighth of an inch longer than this. So these are getting very small and very lightweight. And I have a little technique for getting the weights off the end where I tap a pin on the end of the shaft, just tap it through whilst supporting the weight and that gets the weight off but quite often it's been bending the shaft because these are very lightweight and they're very thin shafts so I may have to destroy two or three of these before I get a good electric motor out of it. And you have to desolder the wires. If you just try pulling it off you'll probably pull the wires out of the motor instead of pulling them off the solder joint and you can't put the wires back in once you've pulled them out. Anyway enough waffle. I'm going to take this one out, get the weight off it and try and fit it on the front here. I'll have to use a little LiPo battery because they're the smallest and lightest I can come up with and see if we can get it to fly. I could try a button cell, but I don't think button cells give you power for long enough. I don't know if it's worth the effort, but it would be nice if we could actually use the propeller. It's not going to be a very efficient propeller, but it would look nice if we could use it. Now obviously that hole in the middle of there is much too big to go on the shaft of that motor. I think what I'll have to do is glue that in place and then try and either drill or melt a little hole right in the middle to push onto the motor. That'll probably end in tears too but I'll give it a try. This is my method for removing the little weight I've got a block of wood with a hole in it, I've got a piece of metal with a slot in it. That slot goes between the weight and the motor, so it should be supporting the weight. So I place that in there and then we tap the centre of the shaft with something like a pin. 
finally, fourth time lucky, I managed to get one off without bending the shaft. So I'm down to 25% success rate this time. I need to extend the wires on it. So what I've got here is some wires and some magnets on the end. Because I can then connect them to a battery. So I was going to give it a little try with one of these button cells, see if they work. could worry about putting some heat shrink tubing on these but I intend the wires to be opposite sides of the fuselage so they shouldn't have any chance of touching and I can put some glue over them to um, insulate them So that's our motor, extended wires. I don't know which was the good one, one of these was dead. Oh yeah, that's going. So, there we go. Fit the propeller on there. Glue that in the front of that little foam plane and fit the battery somewhere around the middle of the plane because that will be trying to sort out the centre of gravity. And put it at an angle so that we should be able to get the plane to circle. Rather than fly off in a straight line. I'll cut a slot in the front there, give it a tiny bit of down thrust compared to the wing and then I'll glue it in place. 
that's the motor in place using this acrylic glue again so we'll leave that to dry probably take a day to dry I should think I've glued the hub to the propeller now I need to cut the back off flush and then what I'll do is I've got a pin here that I shall heat up and try and get as close to the center as I can and then that's the same size as the shaft of the motor so we should be able to put the original propeller on the motor whether it'll work or not no idea these things don't fly very well anyway but we're gonna have some fun with it anyway see what happens well that's interesting I don't know if we'll focus on that oh, yeah. I've just cut the stub of the hub off and there's a hole up the middle of it so I don't know if that's big enough to get the shaft of the motor in there but that saves me trying to heat it up and get my pin in the middle there we are I haven't actually stuck the button cell in place but we can at least demonstrate I don't think we've got anything like enough power whether it be any different with a better propeller but if I just connect that on there I don't know if the camera is picking up the breeze. We might have enough power there to make it a tethered plane hanging from the ceiling. That button cell is warming up actually. Yeah, I think we're probably drawing a bit too much current from it. whether it's worth putting a small lipo on there I really don't think we'll get the power to make it fly because that's that's not even vaguely trying to get out of my hand but it looks nice I might rig up a cotton tether hanging from the ceiling see if it'll fly itself at the moment that's hopeless <laughs> there's nothing like enough power there but that may be that I need to replace that button cell because they don't last for long when you're drawing a good bit of current out of them so I'll go and get another button cell and just see if we get anything else out of it fresh button cell trying to go I might need to give it a bigger rudder I've punched a hole through the fuselage put a magnet through it I don't know if we can see it there and then I've got a button cell held in place on either side using that magnet so we're now going to go for two button cell power. And we go in. So it's not quite what I wanted, I wanted it to fly outdoors, but it just doesn't have enough power. But we are flying as a suspended, or tethered, ceiling tethered, electric powered, 
Wilco four pack party favour foam aeroplane. I suppose I could move those lights out of the way. button cells aren't lasting very long, it's slowing down isn't it? That was two fresh button cells. Let's see if we can get the camera a bit closer now that it's slowing down. That'll do. Job done. Not quite the way it was intended, but we do have an electric powered plane. That's the magnet that I've punched a hole through the fuselage so that can hold a button cell on either side of it. <laughs> 